All right, hello. So my name is Edith Camargo. I'm head of semester, and I'm Edith Camargo. And what we wanted to do was use more traditional tactics to target politicians themselves rather than target citizens. So we did a two-part project. Part number one was our petition. So we did a moveon.org petition. And the reason we chose moveon rather than, say, change.org was twofold. Number one, there were a lot of change.org petitions out there. And number two, moveon.org provided a very simplified process for signees to actually use their name, zip code, city, email, done. Very straightforward. So that is why we chose moveon.org. So our petition targeted IBWC Commissioner Edward Dursino. And the reason we chose him as our target was because many of our speakers noted he was not doing his job at all. So he was not, what we called was for him to enforce Article 4 in Treaty 44. So we really, really wanted him to do his job pretty much. So our goal was 1,500 signatures. And the reason we came up with that number was very multifaceted. So number one, um, we took into account the voting citizens in Imperial Beach, Coronado, and Chula Vista. And we also looked at the other petitions out there dealing with similar issues, whether it is the um, Tupana sewage issue or other environmental issues in San Diego. And they all had around anywhere from 300 to 3,000 signatures. So doing the aggregate, doing the math, it came out to around 1,500. So the petition text included a lot of calls, but we did use um, Aristotle's modes of persuasion. So we use ethos, pathos, and logos. So lots of facts and figures, a little bit of an emotional appeal since he is a politician. Emotions don't tend to work that well. And of course, logic. So the process of collecting signatures is difficult, we're not gonna lie. So we used it, um, we shared it on our own personal social media. We also asked groups such as Citizens Against Sewage to share that on their social media. And lastly, we asked San Diego student groups to share because students like being involved in activism and signing a petition is rather easy activism. So we also, last part, we asked influencers in the community to share the petition for us. So whether it is um, Council Member Alvarez or um, Mayor Dedina, we asked them. Unfortunately, they did not agree, given, again, politicians have a difficult way of managing their own social media, but we did try. So the results were disappointing, we have to admit. We got three, around 300 signatures, so not our 1,500 goal. Um, what we think went wrong is, well, we're trying to decide what went wrong right now. Um, we came to the agreement that it was, one, we did not have enough time. Two, the coverage compared to the other petitions that were out there, the other petitions were started right after the big spill. So there was a lot of attention on the issue, a lot of political will, we'll call it. Um, and three, we, I would say, we could have tried a lot harder, pushed it out, pushed it out, pushed it out, but that's what we got, 300. Luckily, the second part of our project was pretty successful, if I say so myself. All right, so the second part, we chose to do a live protest and rally. Um, so we wanted to partner with a group that was really passionate about this issue and could really get the word out. So that's why we chose Citizen Get Sewage. We thought they were a perfect fit for us. Um, so initially, when we um, approached Ginger, we talked about um, having a rally in front of Juan Barbas' office. However, after speaking to her, we chose to do another target, um, which was a San Diego board um, of supervisors. So because of that, we took their advice and we switched to that location. Um, we created a meeting advisory that said the date, the time. We chose 10.30 on a Wednesday because of the fact that that's at the prime time for media outlets to gather their stories for the nighttime news. And we chose um, this the uh, San Diego County Administration Center at the Waterford Park. And in front of we chose to stand in front of the statue, which was called the Garden of the Water statue, which is actually very fitting for the issue at hand. So for getting ready, um, we went out and purchased all the um, supplies we needed. We made a total of 10 posters. They're displayed around the room. Um, seven were in English and three were in Spanish. Uh, some of the slogans were TNC State of Emergency Now, SD means King Beaches, and um, Lim Limpia Nuestras Playas means that um, we want to clean our beaches. Uh, we also went over our talking points because we wanted to make sure that um, we were all ready to speak to the media outlets. 
Uh, for expectations, we expected around 20 people to show up. However, we were a lot more realistic in terms of how many people would show up for the rally uh, because of the fact that it was at 10.30 on a Wednesday and it was a little bit of a short notice. However, the main focus for us was um, having the media there. Um, Citizens Against Sewage, they sent out the media advisory to over 250 media contacts. So we knew there'd be like a widespread um, of media covering it. Um, and we were very optimistic of having all the um, media there because they are also the agenda, the agenda setters and the gatekeepers for San Diego constituents. They were our main focus. <clears throat> so we arrived to a Thursday, the, in April 25, during the morning, we already had some, some TV outlets, media outlets, such as um, NBC7 and Fox TV announcing our protest. So when we arrived at 10 to the protest, they were already Telemundo joined with NBC7. And the first thing we did was put our signs around, some of the signs around the around the fountain. And then um, Edith and, and Ginger, they gave some interviews to NBC7 and to Telemundo. At the same time, they were arriving other media outlets such as Fox TV, ABC, um, Univision, and Televisa. So in that, in, when they arrived, we all gave some interviews where Heather was taking footage and pictures of all the all was happening. The last uh, media outlet that arrived was KUSI. They arrived later because they were covering another protest that was being held in the other in the other part of the building about opioid crisis. So here, as you can see, we got some media coverage during the afternoon the next days. Here we can see it, uh, Telemundo with Edith giving the interview in Spanish. Then uh, we have NBC7 too, where they made some footage about it. And uh, finally, we have K KUSI2. Here you can see. Well, so I Then go into view. Um, full screen. <coughs> full screen. Enter full screen mode on this. So finally, to sum up, we have to tell that it, the starting point was a bit complicated because we didn't get what we expected on the on the on the sign um, of the signs and everything in the first. But uh, when we helped, like when we created the protest, we have to say that citizens and switch helped us a lot with the connections and with everything. And we're kind of happy with, with the results because we discovered and we learned that even we're like we're a small group, we can we can be heard and make a difference. So we hope we help a bit on this issue. And we're gonna say thank you to the Citizens Against Switch for everything for the help, and thank you to Professor Sister for the opportunity. And that's all. Thank you. <laughs>